No. No. Pavel, show her the letter. understand. If there was something she had to tell Mr. Jack, she'd have told me first. You never saw her on that night? No, I was out. I shall never forgive myself for that. And those words, I have something to tell you, convey nothing to you at all? No, sir, nothing. I see, thank you. Now, does, um, does anyone know how she spent that last day in London. She went to the hairdressers. She had an appointment from 11 until 12.30. And then she had lunch at her club. She always lunched at her club on hairdresser days. Well, what else? What did she do in the afternoon? I've got her engagement diary in my room. Mr. De Winter never asked me for it. I kept all her things. Would you like me to look? De Winter? By all means, do fetch the diary, Mrs. Danvers. Seven o'clock here, then lunch at the club. Two o'clock, Baker. Who's Baker? Baker. She didn't know anyone called Baker. Katie, okay, see for yourself. Baker. She never spoke of anyone called Baker. If he'd been important, Danny would have known him. Baker never kept any secrets from Danny. I think we're just wasting time. If he wasn't important, why did she write his name in her diary? I don't know. Maybe someone who sold silk stockings or face cream. Well, there's something among the telephone numbers here. Baker 0299. 0299. There's a mark against it. It might be anything. I... Could... Could that be an M? It might be. It's not like her usual M. She might have scribbled it in a hurry. Perhaps it's the exchange. Yes, of course, that's right. M for... Uh, Mayfair. I'll try it, shall I? 0299. Uh, hello, operator. This is Mr. Crawley here. Could you get me a London number, please? It, it's Mayfair 0299. Here. Yeah. And it is urgent, so could you hurry, please? Is that Mayfair 0299? Is Mr. Baker there, please? Who? Ah, oh, yeah, wrong number, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm very sorry. Wrong number. It was a Lady Eastley. She was rather cross. A try museum. Or Maida Vale. Or Mill Hill. Well, wait a minute. Let me try. Double nine. This is Dr. Baker speaking. Who? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Didn't I read about it in the newspaper? 
I see. Yes? Can you tell me what it's about? Oh, well, if you'd rather. Just a moment. Would 3.30 suit you? Good, I'll see you then, Colonel Julian. Oh, hang on, I'd better give you the address. Roseland, 53 Carlton Road, North West 6. A Dr. Baker. Dr. Baker. Yet another mystery. Why go all the way to London to see a doctor? And why did she keep it from me? She always told me everything. Well, perhaps she didn't want to worry you. I've arranged for us to see him tomorrow at 3.30. It'll have to be an early start. Six o'clock? Yes, that will be fine. I shall come with you. Yes. Yes, I expected that you would. Well, since I'm unlikely to get an invitation to stay to dinner. <laughs> Don't look so glum. The newspapers will soon be clamoring for your life story. From Monte Carlo to Mandalay, the experiences of a murderer's girl bride. <laughs> I can see it all. Good night, old man. I'll see you in the morning. Sleep well. Walk into the car, Danny. Danny. This time tomorrow, this time tomorrow they'll know. They'll know she was expecting a child. Everything will slip into place. This time tomorrow they'll know. We'll have tomorrow night together, won't we? Oh, yes, yes. They won't do anything at once. Not for 24 hours, perhaps. We'll have tonight. And tomorrow night, my darling. Can you tell us? Well, yes, I can't. See why not? It was um, a Mrs. Danvers. Danny? She gave a false name. Yes, of course. A false name. Do you remember this Mrs. Danvers? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Just a moment. I do remember her. Tall, slim, dark, very handsome. Yes, that's right. May we know why she came to see you? Well, it's extremely unprofessional, as you know, but since your wife is dead and since the circumstances are so very exceptional, the woman calling herself Mrs. Danvers was very seriously ill. She'd come to see me a few weeks before, a gynecological problem, she thought, a pain. I took some x-rays, which showed a certain malformation of the uterus. She could never have had any children. But there was something else. And I told her this when she came to see me on the 12th. She wanted to know the truth, so I told her. The pain was slight as yet. But the growth was deep-rooted, and in three or four months' time, she would have been under morphia. An operation would have been no earthly use at all, and I told her this. The thing had got too firm a hold. 